So this video is going to be the dehydration of alcohols. Dehydration is just a simple elimination reaction where the small molecule that's eliminated is water. Because if you're dehydrated, you don't have enough water. And obviously, if you have too much alcohol, you'll probably be dehydrated as well. So just like with the elimination reactions of the haloalkanes, we produce an alkene. With the dehydration of alcohols, we're also going to produce an alkene. And this time, the thing we're going to use to react with our alcohols is going to be an acid. And we're going to use sulfuric acid for this. So we're going to draw sulfuric acid out whole. This is going to be the better version of the mechanism. There are simplified versions out there as well. But this is probably the version that actually helps you understand it the most. So acids, by definition, donate protons. Our hydrogen here is going to be the proton, and it's going to be donated to this oxygen. An H plus positive charge is going to be attracted to those lone pairs. But curly arrow has to go from a lone pair, so the curly arrow points from the lone pair on the oxygen to the hydrogen. Now that hydrogen is going to go off onto the alcohol, which means the electron pair that it's sharing with the oxygen and the sulfuric acid will pop on to that oxygen. That's the first step. And from that, we're going to make this molecule here. And you've got to think it's accepted that proton from the sulfuric acid. Protons have a positive charge. To balance charges, this oxygen also now needs a positive charge. Now, that's obviously not an overly stable configuration. And that, two H's and the hydrogen, wants to disappear off as water. And we're going to let it. So we're going to have the carbon-oxygen bond. That's the one that's going to break. The electrons will go to the oxygen. And we'll have a leaving group of water. So we'll let that disappear off as H2O. Don't forget about that. We need it when we're going to balance the full equation. Now, the electrons were lost between the carbon and the oxygen. They've gone to the oxygen. So that carbon did have one electron in that bond. It's lost it. That's now going to be positive. We've formed a carbocation. And we've formed a secondary carbocation, which is relatively stable. Nothing's happened to the two methyl groups either side. Now, I hear you all screaming out, what's this going to react with? There's nothing left for it to react with. Don't forget, we've got the sulfuric acid that started over here that's lost its proton. That's going to come back here. But actually, we'll draw these bonds out in full. So there's the hydrogen sulfate ion that was left over from here. Remember, it lost the hydrogen. That's why it's a minus ion, because the electrons went to the oxygen. It lost its proton, so now it's got a negative charge. Now sulfuric acid, H2SO4, it wants a hydrogen, because it's li missing one at the moment. So what's it going to do? The lone pair on the oxygens is going to go and attack that hydrogen just there. So that hydrogen will now go on to the hydrogen sulfate ion to remake the sulfuric acid we had at the start. But if we lose that hydrogen down to here, we've got a spare bond here, or a spare pair of electrons, that is going to go into here. Between the two carbons, because that needs some electrons, hence why it's got a positive charge. So it's going to get the electrons that were in this carbon-hydrogen bond and it's going to go between those hydrogens just there. And if we draw out what we've actually made there, the first carbon's been left with two hydrogens because this one's disappeared. And this one has just got a hydrogen and a CH3 group on it. So we've formed propene. We've also formed the water from this step here. Don't forget about that. And 
we've also got the H2SO4 that we've made here. But if we're going to write that out as a full equation, you're going to have your propene, so propanol, propantuol, and it's going to go to propene and water. We don't put the sulfuric acid in there because it's there at the start, gets involved in the reaction, reproduced at the end, it's just a catalyst. So we don't need it in the actual reaction. And that's an absolutely fine mechanism for secondary and tertiary alcohols. However, things are gonna be a little bit different for our primary alcohols. So let's keep this one simple. We'll do it with ethanol. Pop our two lone pairs just there. When we dehydrate ethanol, again, we're gonna make an alkene, so we're gonna make ethene, and again, we're gonna use the sulfuric acid. You can technically do this with any acid, most commonly sulfuric or phosphoric, but sulfuric, we'll just keep it simple if we just use that. So it starts exactly the same. Lone pair to the hydrogen, so the hydrogen is going to be taken off of the acid, because it's an acid, proton donor, and we'll make a hydrogen sulfate ion in exactly the same way we did before. However, this time, we have this intermediate stage with the positive oxygen. If that water molecule disappeared off like it did up in the top reaction, we'd be left with a positive charge on this carbon. It'd be a primary carbocation. Now, primary carbocations are so unstable and require so much energy to keep it and make it there that it doesn't happen like that in real life. You don't create a carbocation or primary carbocation in an alcohol dehydration reaction. But that's not actually a problem. So this is the other molecule that we've made here, the hydrogen sulfate ion. So this group here still has to be eliminated. That's why it's an elimination reaction. It still has to leave. It's still gonna be our leaving group. But we don't want it to leave leaving a carbocation, because that's not going to be stable. So if the hydrogen sulfate takes this hydrogen here, that leaves this carbon with a spare pair of electrons, has nothing to do with it. So it will go into the middle between the two carbons, creating the double bond. This carbon now has too many electrons, wants to lose something. So it will go to that hydrogen. And rather than having an intermediate carbocation like we did, up in this step. This time it happens all as one big smooth reaction, happens all at once. The hydrogen sulfate takes the hydrogen, the double bond is formed, and the H2O leaves all at the same time. So it's kind of a smooth reaction that doesn't have the intermediate that that one does. But at the end of the day, you're still left with your alkene in this case ethene, you're still left with some water being eliminated and you've still got the sulfuric acid used at the beginning, formed at the end, so it's still going to be a catalyst. So with primary alcohols, this is the correct mechanism. With secondary and tertiary alcohols, the top one where the carbocation is formed is the correct mechanism.